The following video was brought to you in part by the amazing Patreon producers you see before you. If you'd like to become a producer, head over to patreon.com slash 616 entertainment. Your support means the world to me and helps make videos like this possible. I love you. Dan Dans, welcome to Let's Play Friday. My name is Ian, and this week on the show we are playing Fire Pro Wrestling World on the PlayStation 4. Now, as you can see, our first match is a landmine death match, and every corner of the ring is filled with a table covered in fluorescent light tubes. This is going to get fucked up. We've got Raven taking on RVD, and Raven goes into the first set of fluorescent light tubes. Dan Dance, this is going to be a death match, which means it's going to be violent as fuck. Now, I'm not playing. I'm simming this, just so we're clear. Uh, I was going to do a little bit of commentary as far as just for the show, and I'll do a little bit of commentary for the match itself, like I have been so far. Now, if you guys are not familiar with Fire Pro Wrestling World, because I think most people are not, I think OGs are familiar with what Fire Pro is. Fire Pro is a very, it's a, it's been around a long goddamn time. <laughs> it's a wrestling game series that's been around since I believe the Super Nintendo. I featured a very small little piece of it in my History of WCW Video Games Part 1 video. I think it was Part 1. Yeah, because it was, well, I was talking about the Super Nintendo game. And how Fire Pro was a good Super Nintendo game, and how WCW Super Brawl was not. It was dog shit. <laughs> Fire Pro's been a around a long time, and it's always been really known and lauded for its creation suite. From rings, to characters, to referees, to other wrestlers, belts, all sorts of shit. And on Fire Pro Wrestling World, on the PlayStation 4, technology has come so far that we can just download ring textures and characters off of the internet, like we have been with the WWE 2K games for a while. Now... Fire Pro Wrestling World, the graphical style has not changed over the years, really. Like, the textures are a little smoother, the rings look better, but it's still 2.5D. So our ring is in 3D, the arena is in 3D, but our wrestlers and our referee are all 2D. This art style does it for some, and it does not do it for others. You know, it's kind of a take it or leave it sort of deal. The quality of the wrestling, both when you're playing and when you're just simming, are so high I put it up there with any wrestling game out there today as far as like watching it and it being exciting uh, the, the quality of the animation and the moves is really good look at RVD with that somersault kick to get out of Raven's back grapple I don't think so you know for being two uh, ECW extremists as they were called when WWE ECW was around these guys really aren't getting too deep into the weapons. Raven just went three knuckles deep on RVD's ball sack, I'll tell you that much. Good lord. That's a spinning back suplex from Raven from the Bowery. He's here to cause RVD some trouble. That's a spinning lariat for your deeds. Whole effing show? How about whole effing fucking arm to the face? What's funny is I said whole effing fucking arm to the face, which means... Whole fucking fucking arm to the face. <laughs> Speaking of death matches, I want to just say a little something real quick here about my buddy G Raver. He's a wrestler who was uh, involved in a pretty bad accident recently. Uh, if you've seen the footage, he's about to take what appears to be a suplex off the top of a ladder, and there are light tubes everywhere, and things didn't go according to plan. And when G Raver hit the mat, there was much more blood coming out of his arm than there should have been. <laughs> he needs a lot of medical attention. There's a, there's a GoFundMe out there for G-Raver right now. I've tweeted it, at idea 616 you want to dig through and find it. You'd be doing our boy a great favor. Raven goes into the light tubes! And that is not good for business. RVD building a head of steam here. Can he run away with this one? Raven says, I don't think so. Back suplex for your deeds. Oh, that's a barbed wire bat. Look out. Barbed wire bat to the gut. RVD's got to avoid that thing like the plague, and he sends Raven into the light tubes once again. That triple kick seems to do more damage to Raven than the light tubes do. Maybe it's just the years of abuse his body has taken. But is it just me, 
Or does Raven seem immune to these goddamn light tubes? <laughs> Raven wants to... He seems to want to get up to the top rope, but he can't. Because there's fucking light tubes there. <laughs> and I don't think he's putting two and two together. Maybe he's been hit in the head too many times. What a striking war! RVD puts a stop to it with a jumping, spinning wheel kick. These striking combinations from RVD are off the chain. What you really don't want to do in a match like this is wind up outside the ring as Raven ducks a big kick. He's got RVD locked in a front face lock. He's got to do something with this momentum, but no, he decides to take time to pose. Don't know if that was the best move for Raven. You know, he says, what about me? What about Raven? What about a fucking even flow DDT RVD with the pin? One, two, that, oh my goodness. Raven kicks out at the last second and he eats the light tubes once again. RVD loves this bow and arrow lock. Could he go for the pin to put him away? He could, but he wants to inflict as much pain as possible on Raven, who might be enjoying it. RVD off the ropes, Raven with a big atomic drop, right in the whole fucking show. That's an eye rake, that's dirty. Big suplex, oh, into a falcon arrow! Now what's troublesome for RVD is his main move, the five star frog splash, is off the table. He can't, that's a big hurricane rana, dropping Raven on his fucking head. He can't get up to the top rope because it's blocked by those light tube tables. The jumping kicks are doing him justice, but does he have enough power to put Raven away? As he locks him in the bow and arrow lock, and we can't see anything because of the fucking board in the corner. <laughs> Good God, man. We got the TNA production crew here. What's their fucking name now? Impact Wrestling, I think? Raven dropping an elbow to the back of the head of RVD. He wants to get to the top rope. Still doesn't realize it's not an option. Whew. Don't know what to tell you about that one, Raven. <laughs> I was putting over the AI in this game earlier. That's a big flipping senton by the whole fucking show. I was putting over the AI earlier, and uh, now Raven is making me look like a fucking buffoon. But here's the deal, guys. I did not program this CAW. This Raven, I downloaded it. What's Raven got up his sleeve? A big pile driver! Drops RVD head first. Can he do something with it? There's a sleeper hold from behind. Odd choice of moves. <laughs> Maybe that was his plan all along. RVD, I'm gonna hit you with a pile driver, and then I'm gonna put you in a sleeper hold. <laughs> Raven's got that piece of table, hits RVD right in the spine with it. Not good for a Friday afternoon, let me tell you something. Off the ropes, that's a big clothesline. RVD is in trouble here. Drop toe hold onto the broken table. Raven is having none of it. Kicks RVD away like a piece of shit. Tries to go to the top rope, can't because he's a piece of shit. <laughs> RVD's getting Raven in position. Got him in the deep corner there. That's a Russian leg sweep. Let me tell you something about momentum. You don't want a guy like Raven throwing you backwards like that. It's not good for your brain. That's an elbow to the throat. Try breathing after that. The Russian leg sweep. Raven's going back to that well, but it's paying off so far. Got that piece of table right to the head. RVD is seeing stars for sure. Raven might be calling for the even flow DDT. Nope! Whack it with the table. See if I give a shit. Wouldn't that be amazing if, like, WWE commentators talk like that? Raven hits him with the table. See if I give a shit. <laughs> Something swinging neck breaker. Something tells me this match would be slightly better if Raven realized that he could not get to the top rope. RVD with a twisting back suplex. Now, like we stated earlier, we got a striking war going on here, and not smart to get involved in a striking war with the 
with, oh, take two. With a superstar who has the kickboxing abilities of Rob Van Dam. Raven says fuck you to apparently someone and then tries to get on the top rope again. <laughs> RVD with a straight right to the face, putting Raven down for the count, possibly. This match does have a 30 minute time limit, so it's going to be interesting to see who eventually goes for the win. Raven with the Russian leg sweep, and I think his head might have hit that barbed wire bat. That's a discus elbow. Right into a swinging neck breaker. RVD says, fuck yo, elbow, Raven. That's a flipping senton. RVD building momentum. Got Raven right where he wants him. That's a package brain buster. Or a fisherman brain buster. One of the two. Swinging neck breaker. This is trouble. I can tell the AI wants the five star frog splash, but there's nowhere for him to go. <laughs> oh, man. This is fun. This match, it really does. I'm dropping character for a second. It really does have a 30 minute time limit. So, one of these guys has to get it together. <laughs> oh my goodness. He misses the clothesline. RVD with the dragon screw. That's a punch to the ding ding. No bueno, sir. I can't believe Raven has not gone for the fucking DDT one time. He's the only one who's really trying to use the weapons at all. But his his output of major offense is severely lagging. And nobody's really going for pinfall attempts at all. I think we saw one. In the one pinfall attempt we saw, RVD almost put Raven away. So why he hasn't gone to that well again, I really don't have any fucking idea. Raven... His appendages are apparently glued. They are drawn to RVD's ball sack. RVD with the back body drop onto the piece of broken table. Not a safe landing. Running bulldog for your deeds. Raven, you can't go on the top rope, you dumb cunt. <laughs> it's a big shot to the head. RVD with triple kicks. Make something happen here, Rob. <laughs> Raven's like, I don't think so, dude. Discus clothesline, nobody home, because RVD was already in the process of dying of death. That's a jumping elbow drop. Please do something with it. You've got five minutes. RVD with a rolling Samoan drop. Standing moonsault, that could be it! RVD puts Raven away with a standing moonsault. You know, when you see a barbed wire light tube deathmatch, I think you expect more violence and less technical prowess from the wrestlers involved. But RVD says, I don't think so, man. Putting him away with a bunch of flashy kicks and a standing moonsault. And that match right there is going to get a 93 and I'm earning trophies left and right. How you doing? <laughs> That's one of the cool things about Fire Pro Wrestling World is you can see your match evaluation, which Fire Pro has done forever. You can see how long the match was what move or series of moves led to the finish, and more. So we went from an ECW throwback there, and now we are going to get rid of the landmine deathmatch option. What we're going to do is go for... This is just going to be a normal match. But it's not just going to be anywhere. This match is going to be... Or the nitro ring because this match is going to be for the WCW World Heavyweight Championship which is held by the man called Sting we're gonna sim this one too I'm not gonna play now who's gonna challenge Sting for the WCW World Heavyweight title right here you can see a lot of different wrestlers I've downloaded we've got Shawn Michaels Stone Cold Steve Austin Finn Balor The Rock AJ Styles Shinsuke Nakamura, we've got Bill Goldberg, WCW names, how about Hulk Hogan, how about Scott Hall, Jericho used to be in WCW, you know what I'm saying, that's a pretty current looking Jericho, I think Sting is going to put the WCW World Heavyweight title on the line against Mr. Perfect, Kurt Henning, 
one of my all-time favorites. He's going to rock the pink in this match. So they are going to be at... Yeah, let's go to the Spike Dome. The referee is going to be Mr. Judgment. Now we're going to update the CPU settings here a little bit. We're going to put him at a 6. Just one match. The win conditions... Um, yeah, 3 count. Because submission is there as well. Yeah, you can go over the top rope. Why not? But it's not going to end the match. The over the top rope. You know what I'm saying? DQ is on. No special rules here whatsoever. Entrances, yes sir. Run-ins, you know what, maybe, who knows. <laughs> so this match is going to be for the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. Mr. Perfect, Kurt Hennig versus the man called Sting. There's a lot riding on this one, you know what I'm saying, Dan? It's just like there's a lot riding on this show, Let's Play Friday every week. Because you know what, guys? I don't know if you've seen my posts recently on the community page or over on patreon.com slash 616 entertainment. Uh, Let's Play Friday Season 4 is coming to an end very soon. Within the next couple weeks, I will be wrapping this show up. And that's not to say that there won't be more Let's Plays down the line. But this show is going to be going on the shelf here pretty soon. And right here we get to see some of the awesome stages and some more of the 2.5D graphics on display. The man called Sting, the WCW World Heavyweight Champion, reigning, defending, heading down that bright red ramp. About to head into this ring. How cool does that fucking ring look, guys? I highly recommend this game to anybody who's interested. Let's ring that goddamn bell. Now, if you guys are interested in this little idea that I've had... <laughs> I've been playing around with this idea of possibly doing like a GM mode in SmackDown vs. Raw 2006, but the problem that I ran into was I found out that uh, Xavier Woods, Austin Creed, has already done that. I thought I had a kind of original idea, but when I pitched it to somebody, they're like, oh, that's like Austin Creed's show, and I was like, fuck! <laughs> so I kind of don't want to steal that. But I've been playing with the idea of doing like a weekly wrestling game show that wouldn't be like in-depth written shit like Triangle X Squared Circle, like my documentaries. But more like this, like we'd watch some matches, we can do commentary over them. Let me know if that sounds interesting to any of you guys out there. Sting goes for a big clothesline right there, but Mr. Perfect is nowhere to be found. Now this is a matchup that I don't think we saw very often in WCW. I don't know if I can recall one specific time that Sting faced off with Kurt Hennig. Can you guys? If you can, tell me where to find it. Because I'll watch the shit out of that. I love both of these guys. I'll tell you what Mr. Perfect doesn't like is that insiguri to the back of the head. Sting's working on the legs already because he knows later on when he puts that scorpion deathlock on, he's going to be going back home with the WCW World Heavyweight Championship around his waist or on his shoulder, depending on how he's feeling at the moment. <laughs> Mr. Perfect answers back, says, you want a single leg crab? Here you go. I got one too, buddy. Sting with the big DDT right in the middle of the ring. I have never seen that fucking move before, but that was sick. We're seeing the man called Sting do a lot of work on the individual parts of Mr. Perfect's body. He's doing damage to the legs. He's doing damage to the arms. And when you think about it, it all makes sense. He's going up to the top rope, and he decided he didn't want to. <laughs> that was just a shout-out to Raven. He's like, here, I'll do it for you. Sting with a rock bottom? <laughs> what the fuck? Again, guys, I didn't create these characters. Somebody else did. They assigned these move sets. Don't blame me. <laughs> But, to be fair, that's an Alabama slam from the man from Venice Beach, California. How you doing? Yeah. Off the ropes, that's a big elbow. That's, oh my god, what a brutal clothesline. Sting has got Mr. Perfect right where he wants him. Might be able to put this shit away early. Oh, low blow, ref. Where are your eyes? Where are your eyes, man? That's a, that's a disqualification if I've ever seen one. Sting wraps him up. One, two. Oh, my goodness. 
Six minutes in and Sting almost walks away with the world title. Gorilla Press slams him down hard. Scorpion Deathlock. This could be it. Mr. Perfect survives the Scorpion Deathlock and he wraps him up, small package. Sting is nowhere near being finished. What a showcase we are seeing here from the man called Sting. Off the ropes, jumping up in a DDT. Scorpion Deathlock again, going back to the well. Mr. Perfect fighting back with everything he has. He can't survive too many of those. He's got to make something happen here soon. Military press up and down. Say goodbye to your spine. Sting is going to help you say goodbye. Scorpion Deathlock locked in and that's it. Your winner and still WCW World Heavyweight Champion. That's Sting. Goodness me. That was a fucking ass whooping. That was gnarly. Good lord. Damn, I'm getting trophies left and right. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> I'll take it. I don't know how they're going to call that match a 5.7. Ooh, I've never seen that title defense graphic before. That was really fucking cool. What's Is something fancy going to happen now? Oh, no. I guess that was it. But here's what I'm thinking, guys. We've been to ECW. We've seen WCW. And now I think at this point, we are going to have to see a cage match. Nah. Yeah, cage match? We're going to see a cage match. Not for Ring of Honor, but for AEW. And let me tell you something. Mr. Judgment is going to be the ref. We're going to sim it. We are going to see Chris Jericho. You know what he's going to do? He is going to take on... Why, why can't I make it a title match? Oh, because these guys are here. We're going to get out of my created wrestler area. Or my downloaded wrestler area. And we are going to find... Mr. Where did he go? How you doing? Got to be near the top. Mr. Kenny Omega. The IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. The, why won't it let me put the belt on the line? Whatever, who gives a fuck? Let's pretend it's a title match. We are going to see these guys in a cage, but it's not a cage death match. You have to win by escaping the cage. 30 minute time limit. CPU level 7. That's their difficulty level. You know what I'm saying? Who is going to walk away with this one? Jericho Omega 3 in a cage. Are you guys keeping up with AEW? I've seen, I saw um, Double or Nothing, and then I watched, what the hell is it called? The most recent one. All Out. That was right here in Chicago. And uh, let me tell you something about AEW. <sighs> I prefer the product overall to the WWE because I find WWE's product to be, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Insulting? <laughs> I can't stand the presentation of their product. The fucking, the commentators pulling their shit with just like, a woman with the message of Nia Jax. You know, a woman with the message of Nia Jax. Guys, did you know that a woman with the message of Nia Jax, shut up. We get it. We've been following the story. Let us experience the story. You don't have to beat us over the fucking head with it. That's the problem I have at WWE. That and the constant repetition of the same shit over and over. Now, my problem with AEW is I'm one of those guys who... If I see you take a Canadian Destroyer off a ladder through a table, that's it. You're done. You're out of the match now. You know what I'm saying? AEW has that problem where every wrestler on the card wants to have a five-star match. And that doesn't sound like a problem. That sounds like that's going to be a great show from top to bottom. But to me, I think it's there's no pacing. There's no storytelling across the show. You know what I mean? 
not every match should be long as fuck with 50 false finishes and 80 high impact moves. I don't think, that's not what I like to watch, personally. And you can tell there's, look at that, walls of Jericho locked in. You can tell there's not a lot of communication between everybody backstage. Because, let's take All Out, for instance. Opening match on the, what was it, the undercard. The Women's Battle Royal. Britt Baker, I believe it was, pulls out a Canadian Destroyer. Fast forward a few matches, and Joey Janela does a Canadian Destroyer over the top rope through a table to Darby Allen. Fast forward like three, door, three more matches, and you've got... One of the Lucha guys doing a Canadian Destroyer off a ladder through a table to one of the Young Bucks. Guys, why is everyone on the car doing the fucking Canadian Destroyer? It's not a suplex. It's not a fucking body slam. It's not a punch. That's a that's the end of the match, the Canadian Destroyer. That's it. Nobody should get up from that. I, I might be one of those old school guys and I'm just berating you at this point, but that's that's how I feel. It, uh, it irritates me. I'm not a big fan of that. But now that my AEW versus WWE diatribe is over, let's get back to the match. Jericho reverses the suplex, drops Kenny Omega from high in the sky, locks in the walls of Jericho one more time. But here's the issue, guys. You can only win this match by getting out of the cage, climbing up over the top, and to even make an attempt at getting out of the cage, you've got to incapacitate your opponent for a pretty good deal of time. Let me tell you something. Kenny Omega with the knee to the gut he figures if I take the wind away from Jericho, if I hurt him right in the breadbasket, how is he going to be able to get up, race across the ring, and stop me from climbing up over the top? You understand? Jericho with the tilt-a-world backbreaker says, I got something for you too. Lift him up. Double underhook power bomb. Jericho's got the high impact moves going. He's got Kenny laying in wait. Jericho with a missile drop kick. Kenny Omega is in big trouble. Spinning chop. Jericho ducks Kenny's chop off the ropes. Here he comes. Hurricane Rana. Jericho's offense in this match is off the chain. And just as I say it, Kenny Omega answers back with a body slam off the top rope, up over the top with a face buster of sorts. There's probably a fancy name for that move that I don't know. Kenny's taking the knees out, picks him up, deadlift into a German suplex. The momentum continues. Fisherman brain buster. Let me tell you something, that doesn't feel good. Kenny's trying to get over the top of the cage. He's on his way. Jericho's shaking it, but it's too late. Kenny Omega, out of nowhere, escapes the cage and claims victory nine minutes in. See, that's where Jericho went wrong. He performs all this offense. Gets dropped on his head once. Kenny Omega's the fresher man. He hasn't tired himself out. Is that a good excuse? <laughs> it's as good as any other excuse, right? What do you think, Dan Nance? I think we've got time. Look at these trophies I'm popping. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> I think we've got time for one more match. Now, where is it going to be, and what is it going to be? I'm thinking we are going to we are going to have ourselves a battle royal, and it's going to be what's normal. Eliminated wrestlers leave the ring, last one standing leaves. That's what we're going to do. This is going to be a big-ass battle royal. Pins, submissions, all sorts of shit. What ring? I didn't. I never finished my 616 ring, so don't ask about it. Nitro, ECW, we've got Raw, we've got the Ring of Honor. We're going to put this in the old-school WWF Raw ring because this is going to be a WWF versus WCW battle royal. But it's going to be every man for himself. You got me? You get me out of there. We're going to sim this fucker. First entrance, you're out of your mind if you don't think it's going to be the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels. Who else is going to be in it? You know Stone Cold Steve Austin is going to be involved. That's two WWF guys, so now we got to add a WCW guy. We're going to go with Bill Goldberg. Give ourselves another WCW guy. You're out of your mind if you don't think Hulk Hogan is going to be involved. Now, he could be on either side, you know what I'm saying? But Scott Hall is here for one reason and one reason only, and that's to show off 
for the NWO. We are going to add our good friend Brett, the Hitman Hart. We are going to see a little bit of Triple H going on in this match. Do we have an old school H? Nah. And we're not going to go with Corporate H. And our last entrant, let's see, we've got WCW. I think we need one more WCW wrestler, and I'll be god damned if it's not going to be Diamond Dallas Page. You know what I'm saying? We are going to set the CPU level at about a 6. The time limit is going to be 1 hour. 100% speed. So over the top rope. You can get eliminated by going over the top rope or by being pinned. You got me? Oh, I'm excited. Can we put a belt on the line? I guess I never decided champions. What's world class? I guess it's a belt that I made that I never decided what it was. So this is for the world class championship. You got me? A WCW versus WWF battle royal for the world class championship. And this is going to close out this episode of Let's Play Friday. Dan Dan's, I got to know right now. Leave a comment with your pick. Who is walking away with the world class championship? This is a ragtag group of motherfuckers, let me tell you what. In this arena, I picked a really cool ring, but this arena just doesn't really match with the surroundings. I didn't do enough research. This is the point of the match that we like to call a clusterfuck when it comes to battle royals. This is all out chaos. Everybody is doing everything. I see Scott Hall was going after Stone Cold Steve Austin. Triple H lined up with Hollywood Hulk Hogan. This one is up in the air. Anybody at this point can walk away with the world class championship. What's funny is I'm seeing a lot of WCW versus WWF happening. Shawn Michaels is taking on Scott Hall. That's not Razor Ramon, so that's WCW versus WWF, thank you very much. <laughs> Michaels goes for the pin, but it's way too early. Nobody's going out just yet. Let me tell you something. It's hard to do commentary on any specific thing because there's so much happening. Austin is facing off with Goldberg. He did for at least a second there. <laughs> Dan Dan's, I want to tell you that if you go over to patreon.com slash 616 entertainment and sign up and make a pledge at any level... You can listen to, at this point, all four of the Patreon-exclusive podcasts that we have put up. The most recent one had myself and my co-host, the artist formerly known as Mike Charles. We sat down and we talked for nearly two hours about the Spider-Man trilogy. Sam Raimi's trilogy, that's Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3. You know what I'm saying? It was a full review and in-depth retrospective conversation. It was fun as fuck to record, and I think you guys are going to have a lot of fun listening to it as well. One of the other cool things that happens over on Patreon.com slash 616 Entertainment is if you sign up at the voting rights level, that means that you guys get to let your voices be heard and decide which games get featured on Let's Play Friday. You know what I'm saying? So far, the Dan Dans have chosen WCW vs. NWO Revenge, which was a massive hit. The Dan Dans have chosen... Uh, what the fuck else was it? There's been a couple. I can't remember right now. I can't remember every episode I've ever done. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shawn Michaels got Goldberg up, takes him for a ride with a jumping suplex. There's a, there's still a lot happening right here. <laughs> Good God. Goldberg had a straight foot lock locked in. There's a spear by Goldberg on Hulk Hogan. Hogan is in trouble. But Bret Hart has taken the fight to everybody until Goldberg shows up. Says, I don't think so. You know what I'm saying? Scott Hall and Triple H, original members of the clique facing off in the right-hand corner there. Big, big business. Shawn Michaels was looking for her can run on Goldberg, but gets powerbombed for his deeds. Good God. <laughs> this is really hard to keep up with. Goldberg with the big full Nelson slam on the heartbreak kid. 
You know, there's a lot of guys around the ropes right now. And you gotta remember, getting pinned eliminates you from this match, but so does going over the top rope. Any one of these guys could be in danger, as long as they stay near those ropes. Bret Hart with a diving elbow, but Hogan moves out of the way at the last second. He says, I don't think so. Shawn Michaels and DDP with a big double suplex on Goldberg. That's a swing neckbreaker from Stone Cold Steve Austin on Scott Hall. Hogan with the pile driver on Bret Hart. DDP's looking at Triple H with bad intentions. Hogan just had Bret Hart pinned for a good three and a half seconds, but the ref was nowhere to be found. Shawn Michaels over the top rope, but he survives. Stone Cold Steve Austin has been eliminated by Bret the Hitman Hart. Has he? Oh, no, he hasn't. All right. What the fuck was that? Didn't look like he went right over the top rope. I guess not. All right. <laughs> Maybe it has to be that certain special animation, I don't fucking know. <laughs> I was gonna have this whole thing about like, oh, Scott Hall, Shawn Michaels is eliminated. That is what we're looking for, damn man. Shawn Michaels, the heartbreak kid, Mr. WrestleMania, the first entrant and the first eliminated. That's a big deal. See, DDP, he just went through the ropes. That's what that was. We gotta mind our P's and Q's here when it comes to the world class championship. Because anybody can walk away with a pedigree! Pedigree! Hogan goes down to the pedigree! And Goldberg picks him right back up. Big mistake. Had Goldberg left Hogan down, who knows what would have happened. <laughs> How's my commentary, guys? Am I doing okay? <laughs> Goldberg with a big fall away slam on Stone Cold Steve Austin. One of the all time dream matches we never got to see Goldberg and Stone Cold. Triple H goes up, gets double suplexed out of the ring by Austin and Goldberg who are now teaming up. You never know what's gonna happen in a big match like this. I've been paying real close attention to Austin and Goldberg because both of them have moves that can hit you out of nowhere. The Stone Cold Stunner or the Spear, all of it's trouble. Diamond Dallas Page is not to be fucked with as well, but Bret Hart goes up with a flying armbar on DDP. I thought the referee said that was it for DDP. Diamond Cutter out of nowhere! DDP drops Bret Hart with a Diamond Cutter and nearly gets eliminated by the immortal Hulk Hogan. Two times in a row, DDP holds on. His resiliency is off the charts. Three in a row, DDP get out of the corner. Hulk Hogan has got it out for DDP, drops him with a pile driver. Stone Cold and Goldberg are going at it once again. Who's going to see the better half of this strike battle? Austin's got double fingers for everybody. As DDP eliminates Triple H, Scott Hall eliminates Bret Hart. Two in a row. And then there were five. Business just picked up big time in the World Class Championship. Over the top, Battle Royal, DDP is eliminated as well. But Hogan hasn't had enough. Hogan wants to inflict more damage. Shoulder breaker on the concrete floor. Will it be Scott Hall? Will it be Hulk Hogan? Will it be Stone Cold Steve Austin? Or will it be Goldberg who walks away as world class champion? You guys stick around to find out. That's where we go to commercial break. Let me tell you all about it. Patreon.com slash 616 Entertainment and the Triangle X Squared Circle episode on WWE Crush Hour, which comes out September 16th. Everybody go get your snacks, go to the bathroom, you need to come back. And we're back! The World Class Championship is on the line. Scott Hall has Hulk Hogan! Scott Hall eliminates Hulk Hogan, tosses him over the top rope like he was nothing. And at this point in the match, we've got Scott Hall from the NWO. We have Stone Cold from the WWF. 
and we have Goldberg from WCW. Things are dead even. Goldberg is looking to do damage, and he just slammed Scott Hall down like he owed him money. Austin's got home field advantage here in this WWF ring. He feels right at home in the confines of those red ropes with that scratch logo on the outside. Look out, big business! Goldberg is eliminated! Will it be Scott Hall? It will! World-class champion Scott Hall, the bad guy, wins the Battle Royal. Dan Dans, this was Let's Play Friday. This was the Battle Royal for the World-Class Championship. That was fucking fun. That was really fun. Scott Hall gonna pop me some trophies here? How you doing? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he is gonna give me some trophies. Man, I should, I should sim some more matches in this. This is good. I love that you can see the details of when everybody was eliminated. Triple H and Bret Hart literally eliminated two seconds apart. Fucking amazing. You know what else is funny is there were pins, pinfalls in that match. Nobody went for a pinfall. Everybody got thrown over the top rope. And I'm noticing now that DDP's name is spelled wrong. Dan Dance, this is Let's Play Friday. I love you. And I'll see you next week.